Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. So recently I got the new Megadeth CD and I wanted to convert it to a mini disc to listen on the go. For that I want to use the best available quality that a mini disc could hold. Now you might be wondering why I choose a mini disc instead of using Spotify or other service. Well, nostalgia is a very good answer for that and Plus, I've always loved that high-quality sound that only mini discs can provide, mini discs and CD. So it adds a certain extra charm to the music uh, that you simply can get from MP3 or other digital recordings that are not looseless. But before I dive into the recording process, uh, which will be in by the end of the video, uh, let me talk about the challenges that I had to face along the way to get this recorded in the best quality possible into a mini disc. One of the options to do that would be Web Mini Disc and Web Mini Disc Pro. They are amazing apps that made the life of uh, mini disc enthusiasts so easy. But I wanted to have the full experience with running a beginning of the 2000s OS, running Sonic Stage, and so on. Uh, I'll add the link to the app, both apps, to the description, and you can see them here at the bottom. Sonic Stage, yes. The outdated Sony software that was the official software for mini discs and it is no longer supported. Uh, of course, you can install on Windows 10 and 11, but uh, it's, you have to install drives that are not signed and so on. So that's when the Windows XP machine came into play. And I thought, instead of using a virtual machine that I could run on any, any computer powerful enough, I thought it would be a lot more fun and authentic to actually install Sonic Stage in an old Windows XP machine. It's like taking a step back in time to the early 2000s when mini, mini discs were all the rage. Plus, using the physical hardware and an old laptop just kind of adds to the overall experience. So this is how this guy comes into play. I found this old Lenovo T430, among other things. Uh, it's a laptop, an old laptop that we were no longer using daily. And I figured that this was actually the last ThinkPad to support Windows XP. How cool is that? So, what I will do now is show you the process that I used to install Windows XP in this machine in two, four, two ways. Number one, using a USB pen drive. And number two, using a recording and using a regular CD for that. After downloading and running Yumi, we will be greeted by this screen, which uh, we will agree to the terms. Then we can select the USB device we want to use. So I have this one gigabyte FAT32. I want to format with FAT32 again, wipe entire disk too. And here we will select Windows X, single Windows XP installer. We will need an ISO for that. After that, we just click create. Some information that the disk will be cleaned up. So I believe we're good to go. Now the process is complete and we can move to the next step. Now that we have our boot USB drive, let's power up and enter the boot menu. Okay. 
from here I select my USB drive Windows installers and this is important here you have to select the option begin install of Windows XP because this will load the ISO into memory and start the installation from there the other option continue installation is after the first reboot you will have to start from the pen drive again and set the selection continue Windows XP so after a while we are welcomed to the Windows XP professional setup now if we'll continue the regular flow to perform the installation pretty soon Windows will try to reboot and we will have to go into the boot selection menu or if your laptop is not set to start from the USB the first one in order to select the continue with the installation option from Yumi. Go to my USB device, select Windows installers, and here I will select the option continue Windows XP install. So type this offline and then we continue to the next step. You should absolutely never connect a Windows XP machine to the internet. It was not very safe back then and it's definitely not safe now. I wonder if we will hear the sound. Let's see. Oh, bummer. It has not detected the, um, the soundboard. Okay, no problem. We don't have the drivers for it. We can find it, download, and then see it. This is the basic window SXP installation using Yummy. Next, I will burn a, a disk and try the installation via CD-ROM. Let's now burn the image to a CD, a CDR. So I have a note CDR that I found from Nipponic, uh, and we will use a software called EMG Burn. So back to our browser. After download it, install it and you are ready to go. So EMG Burn is really simple to use. So what we'll do is write image file to disk. We come here, select the image file we want. We already have the recorder set here. Everything is fine, just click on write. After we burn the CD and insert it to the laptop, let's go back to the boot menu and press enter to start from the CD-ROM. The process is the same. We go through everything that was done uh, when we use Yummy for it. it will happen here too. We got to the initial screen. Of course, I will not have reinstalled everything again, but um, you got the idea, right? It's as simple as that. With the machine fully installed, I went and installed the missing drivers. And um, 
with that we can finally install Sonic Stage that I've downloaded from archive.org. It's a nice place to go where you need some old software that's no longer available anywhere else. Now that the installation is done, let's reboot. Ooh, yep, that's the sound. It should be installed and working, let's see. Let's start, import a CD. So I already inserted the CD I want to import. And then let's start. All elements were imported. Let's see. Here it is, all tracks are here. Now let's transfer that to the NetMD. Here let's grab the configuration, select SP transfer mode, press OK, and let's do this. Okay, so here we are. Everything is in the MD, the net, using NetMD and Sonic Stage. That's awesome. But anyway, after some extra investigation, I found that there is even a simple way to send a CD to a NetMD. There is a software called MD Simple Burner. This is version 2.0. Unfortunately, Sony requested that um, some of the pages, including minidisc.org, to remove the download links for this. I was lucky to find one in Reddit. So simple is. So MD Simple Burner allows you to copy only using SPLLP. That's LP2 or LP4, unfortunately. So if you want to use SP configuration, which would be the uh, better one, you cannot do it. Unless you have a high MD, which is, unfortunately I don't. <laughs> anyway, um, that's it. If you are looking for another way to use Simple Burn to record CDs to your NetMD, and you want to have some fun like we used to have in 2001, this is another good option for it. Now that we finished recording it, let's hear it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.